is a new Honda Pilot, the fourth generation. I'm Tom Bolk with the Seattle International Auto Show, and I'm driving the Trail Sport Edition if you're the outdoorsy type. Built on Honda's new light truck architecture, it remains unibody, just like Land Rover, Range Rover, and Defender, SUVs that have no problems when the going gets rough. Pilot is a three-row family hauler. Go with the Passport if all you need are two. Trail Sport retails for about $50,000, and yes, that does include shipping. If you want one of these, Honda makes it easy. There really aren't any option packages. You just choose your paint color. Uh, this is Diffuse Sky, an extra 455 bucks. The outgoing Trail Sport was really just a trim package. This one adds some off-road chops. It starts with off-road oriented suspension and tires. Those are mounted to 18 inch alloy wheels embossed with the logo. The front stabilizer bar is a smidge softer. Ground clearance is up by an inch to 8.3. Significant protection keeps the expensive parts from being pranked. The standard trailer hitch receiver is reinforced to double as a recovery point. And then there's the rear differential with unique trail torque logic specifically tuned to handle tough off-road conditions. I drove Trail Sport at the 2023 Mudfest SUV of the Year competition. Honda's Jake Berg rode right. shotgun as we um, bombed around the course. Well as, uh, special wheel design with inset spokes, so you're less likely to uh, scratch your wheel on a rock. Most of the competitors stuck to the standard course, and really, most owners would never try to tackle that kind of terrain. But there was also the severe course for the more capable vehicles. And we can actually go on this if you want to. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, a little incline this is here. <laughs> I'll estimate the grade at 30 degrees. More challenging is the slop. This is kind of loose and mucky. Here's a Wrangler on the section for reference. Uh, keep steady throttle all the way on the way up, and the IVTM4 system will figure out where to send the power. Okay, and drive mode? Uh, we're already in trail mode, so okay. that'll give you, uh, it'll be more eager to send torque to the rear wheels and better at distributing that torque between both sides right, as well. All right, let's go. Mm -hmm. Wow, perfect. That is impressive, considering this is a pilot. I mean, I know it's the trail sport. <laughs> right. I know, but it's a pilot. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people think this is just a soft rotor. Yeah, no, our engineers pulled out all the stops and uh, gave this, you know, everything that you would need to have a successful adventure. That torque vectoring rear diff is extremely effective. And about those skid plates. You test drove this during development and had to actually hit things. <laughs> yeah, so uh, our development team went to uh, a lot of different places, including Moab uh, and Sedona, and basically they wanted to see, like, what do we have to do to try and break the car? Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the skid plates are strong enough to withstand the entire weight of the vehicle crashing down on a rock with no damage. While turbocharged four-cylinders are becoming more popular in machines like this, Honda sticks with its V6. At 3.5 liters, it delivers 285 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. Trail Sport gets a full-size spare. Monitor the power output delivery if you want. For the first time, Pilot shifts gears with a 10-speed transmission. It too remains the same, nothing different with the ratios. Manual shifts are done here. Trail Sport has the drive modes found in every all-wheel drive Pilot. The big difference seems to be the Trail Torque Logic rear differential. Trail Sport's V6 doesn't get extra power, and the gear ratios on the 10-speed are the same on all Pilots. That means all pilots will do the zero to 60 dash in about seven seconds. So this can get out of its own way. If you're into engine notes, there's a nice subtle V6 growl when you put your foot into the throttle. Certainly better than a turbocharged four cylinder. 
All fourth generation pilots have bigger brakes, a new belt driven steering rack and front strut geometry adds steering feel. In back, an all new multi-link suspension improves stability even with the off-road tuning. This goes down the road in a more confident manner. The suspension is on the softer side. This is set up for comfort and I haven't driven the regular Pilot, but I have to believe that the Trail Sport loses a little bit of on-center precision. It's still very, very good. Um, the same thing happens with the competitors, the Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek and Telluride X-Pro. There's going to be some body roll pitching the Trail Sport hard into a corner. The structure of the new light truck architecture feels as solid as the rocks this can climb over. Honda says the fourth generation's chassis rigidity is up significantly from Gen 3. The difference is noticeable. Remember when Honda was known for road noise? Not this one. Pilot is moderately quiet and I've been listening really intently to the tires because they're off-road oriented. Really, not much hum coming off those things. Honda's ADAS suite of standard active electronic safety tech is dubbed Honda Sensing. In addition to automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection and lane keeping assist, the fourth generation adds traffic jam assist, traffic sign recognition, and low speed braking control on most models. The 10 speed is terrific. The kind of transmission you don't even notice Super smooth, always in the right gear, nicely done, Honda. Pilot's driving position is elevated, what most people want these days, and Trail Sport gets an extra inch of altitude. From behind the wheel, it doesn't feel overly large. Visibility is good all the way around, and most pilots get standard blind spot warning. Trail Sport's fuel economy is EPA rated at an average of 20 miles per gallon on standard grade fuel, one shy of a regular all-wheel drive pilot. Trail Sports cabin is trimmed up a bit differently. There's only one colorway and you better like orange trim. Honda says its seats with a new internal frame are more supportive. I like the bolstering, should keep drivers in place during harder maneuvers. These are synthetic leather and heated. The wheel is toasty too. Trail Sport and Elite get a more comprehensive camera setup. It's definitely useful when trying to position the vehicle on the trail. Helps in the mall parking lot too. For cup holder aficionados, Honda engineers have crammed 14 of them into Pilot. And there are the usual places to stow things around the cabin. That will not be a problem. And this little shelf, sunscreen, it's important. If the kids are acting up, you'll know who started it. Trail Sport's standard glass roof lets a lot of light into the cabin. This interface screen is the larger of the two available in Pilot. At nine inches, it doesn't overwhelm the dashboard. Assignable shortcuts below help with organization. Overall, the layout is rudimentary, nothing to confuse people here. The charge pad works well with my iPhone 13 Pro. Not all of them do, and that's important because wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay tend to suck the life force out of phone batteries. Some pilots can seat up to eight with a removable section in the middle of row two. Trail Sport stops at seven. It does what a lot of second rows do. There's as much leg room as you want, especially if you don't care about those in row three. Built-in sunshades are nice. The floor is completely flat. People can scamper between the seats to get to the way back or push this button. I've seen vehicles that only have that feature on one side. Pilot will load up quick. Trail Sport might ride a skosh higher, but small kids shouldn't have much of an issue hiking themselves in. Space-wise, Pilot's third row is pretty good. I'm five foot nine and I have a lot of headroom. There are belts for three back here, but for adults, width-wise, that would be very challenging. I would keep it to small children in that case. I've got row two set about midway. Knee and leg room are fine. I can put one foot under the chair, the other down the middle. That works for me. Um, you know, three row SUVs and crossovers often have very low cushions. Pilots is okay, even though I don't really have much thigh support. At least my knees aren't up into my chin. 
As for cargo space, three-row SUVs and crossovers seldom have much room with all the seats used. The removable middle seat on other pilots' stashes here. Notice that one side of the floor has an easy-to-clean plastic surface. We're talking 18.6 cubic feet or 21.8 if you remove the floor. Not using the Wayback? Well, then there's up to 59 cubes to fill. And if you notice, the load floor is as level as a pool table. You'll be walking around to the back doors to drop the second row, no remote releases. Again, the floor is as flat as Kansas. The Pilot Trail Sport is more capable than many might expect. Buyers will be spending around $6,000 more than an EXL model for the privilege of going deeper into the woods. Check out the Trail Sport or any of the other Pilot models at your local Honda showroom. It's a good way to get the family just about anywhere. For the Seattle International Auto Show, I'm Tom Volk.